Hello and welcome to part one of a three-part series called Diamond Ranch. So what we're trying to capture here is this uh, structures within the environment. So what I wanted to make sure is I didn't want to make my structures too large. I want this to be about the surrounding beautiful country up in North Park, Colorado. Anyway, it's a reference I took recently, end of May. So there's still a lot of snow hidden here and there. And um, so today being block in, I gave a 30 minute session, gave some instructions of, I wanted to try to get a little farther down the road because I'm trying to do 18 by 24 in three sessions. So I can't do it brush by brush. But you can see how I progressed as I go between the paintings and I can explain to you what I did between paintings. With that, get outside and paint. Paint with your friends, get critiques, and don't be intimidated by a white canvas. All right, keep painting. All right, let's do some painting. All right, bye bye. Welcome to part one of a three-part series titled Diamond Ranch. Okay, what's a little different about this is that we're doing an 18 by 24 again and we're going to do it in three sessions. Now, this means I can't get every stroke by stroke uh, in on you like I have on previous paintings. But this time, you're going to have to figure it out in between, you know, what I get done uh, between sessions. And uh, I'll explain to you what I plan to do and when I get back into like session two, I'll tell you what I did do and how I did it. And the reason I'm doing that is because I've only got three days this week because I'm going up to go plein air painting later in the week up in northern Colorado, which I'm really looking forward to. And so with that, we will get started with Diamond Ranch. Now what you might notice here is a dot. And what I did was I took my best shot and dotted it in there and um, for the center of the canvas. And um, so then I kind of checked it. So if it's an 18 meter, so there's nine and there's nine and oh man, that's right on 12. So not too bad. I think it as close to the center as you can. And it's just a way to indicate uh, where all these things are. Now, a lot of my students, and I too, when I was a very new painter, uh, put it in grids. You know, they, they did the grid here, and they did the grid here, and here, and here. And it just, now I just kind of wing it. And, uh, but it's a very good tool if you want to do that. And then uh, you can put a grid on top of your reference. If you want my reference, um, join my, you know, uh, go to my website, uh, georgecall.podia.com backslash, and uh, with that, uh, get onto my email list, my student update list. Uh, it doesn't cost anything, and I send these images out. Uh, whenever I do one of these paintings, I send it out to all the people that are on my email list. All right, so I have the regular stuff down here for my... Ultra, my uh, cobalt, uh, alizarin, cat orange, yellow ochre, Hansa yellow deep, maples, Hansa yellow medium, transparent oxide red, transparent oxide brown. Got my purples, I think it's diazazine purple, titanium white, and I've got some exotics over here, but basically uh, my two standbys are permanent green and a viridian. I can make a lot of greens with blues and yellows and that kind of stuff. Hey, let's see here. I've got my two trusty, uh, I've got my Connoisseur and my T7 top knives. Clean up my mess here, kind of messy. And I also have, for my brushes, I won't be using this little skinny guy. Burn it. And I will be using probably to draw with this uh, number two series rosemary 2025. So it looks like I got a six, four, and two fours of uh, rosemary's 2025s. 
This is a 2025 number four, and this is a number four, 279 rosemary long flat. All right, let's get this stuff out of here. I want to try to figure out where these shapes are going to be. And um, with that, I am going to use a transparent oxide red mixture. Transparent oxide red. I'm going to add some gray in there. Why don't I have my gray out, for Christ's sakes? A lot of grays in nature, so that's what I'm going to be putting out. And let me put a light gray out, which is a Portland gray medium by Gamblin. This gray is a little dark for my liking. I mean, it's, it's very good, but uh, I like a little bit lighter gray. It's called Blue Ice, I think, by Rembrandt. I'm not sure, I forget. So let's throw some light gray in here. And I see here that there's There's a kind of a flat horizon line, but you see there's a tree line right along the top of the pasture, and I'm going to get that. I think that's too low, but so I can guess from somewhere in there. Then there's a triangle coming in down here, goes all the way across. It's actually a little higher. And then in here are bushes, and I'm going to move houses over to the right a little bit. There's a road coming in. And a bunch of trees. And in here are going to be farmhouses. That's where that's going to be. Now, I'm going to really spend some time drawing those shapes. I want to get sure they're right. But right now, I'm just getting general shapes. Okay, kind of know that right in here are going to be buildings. And the roofs go about this high. And then here is a mountain range that goes a little higher as it goes to the right. This line of trees uh, at the end of the pasture uh, goes down. This actually goes up. And then up here is uh, kind of the foreground mountains which are kind of gray, blue, blue and then there's pretty mountains up in here. Now, the other thing that's going on with this drawing is that my reference, and if you've got the reference, you see it's uh, more rectangular, and my canvas is more square, even though it is a rectangle. It's kind of squinched this way, so I'm going to have a, more sky up in here. So if this is where it's supposed to be, I'm going to have these kind of these tree line things coming down here. That's just to give you some reference of what I'm doing here. These mountains, are good. even though they're, the snow part's kind of low, I'm going to make them a little bigger, just because it's Colorado and we like to do that now. The other thing I see about this reference, it's so perfect. It's got a great balance to it. It's got the, these mountains on this side and the upper left and down here. It has these farmhouses in the lower right. So it kind of balances out a little bit. All right. So let's figure out some really, really thin colors for now. Let's just get some basic thin colors into this. Thin, thin stuff. And uh, let's go with some gray-green. So let's go with some ultra-blue and some yellow ochre. 
Yellow ochre. Yellow ochre. And some maples. I'm going to put in a little bit of yellow again and just a touch of viridian. We go a little bit more blue. And now some maples. I think we're about there. A lot of great greens in this. So let's go with a bigger brush. Let's see, I should get a bigger. What do I got down here? Um, All right, I'm going to pull out uh, number eight rosemary. Brand new. Just love a new brush. So it's stiff when it came out of the package. I just got a little bit of turp on it. And I'm going to need more gray in there. And now more. Just lighten it up with a little bit of white. And I'm trying this out here. A sultry deal here. And before I get too far in that, I need to get a darker color for the tree. So I'm going to go ultra yellow ochre, ultra blue, yellow ochre. That's too dark, so I'm going to get some uh, Naples in it and a little bit of titanium white. And that's going to be up in here. It's too dark, so to lighten it, I just got some paper towel in there. Down here there's less of these trees coming down and more as they go up this way. I think this line here is a little darker, this line of trees, so I'm putting the dark in here. And now I'll finish up with the lighter green that I made. You can see I'm putting gamsol in here. Soften this up a little bit. I'm using my inch and a half inch gold star from Hobby Lobby or someplace like that. And that's how we get that center in there. And I'm going to build up and down from there. So, what I see in the foreground is a more silvery green. So I'm going to throw some white and some gray in the foreground with some light green. Throw a little permanent green in there. Permanent green. Checking my timer here. I don't think I turned my timer on. 
turn it. So let's get this in here. Get the road in later. And then somewhere in here, we need to start getting some permanent. So let's now get more permanent green in this mixture. This would be for the flat meadow. Permanent green on top of this gray. I added in a little titanium white. And again, thin stuff. And we're going to put this in this area here. And I'm going to thin this out with a paper towel, just to have a good base. And I left a blank where I'm going to be drawing the, uh, the houses. Unfortunately, I don't like all those pine trees in front of the uh, ranch houses and the barns. So I might put the trees over to one side and maybe less trees in front of the buildings. So I'm going to have to make some of those buildings up because they're so covered up. All right, let's uh, move on with uh, covering up this canvas. thing is if one of these shapes is wrong we don't have to do a lot of transitioning and changes because it's so thin a paint it might even be almost dry by the time we get to this later tomorrow but I'm going to do some painting on this afterwards to get the houses in the right place but let's move on and let's get this uh, gray blue up here so let's get some ultra blue Let's get some uh, the uh, cold gray by uh, Rembrandt 717. Let's get some white. Let's get a little bit of that green in there. That, I think, will do us fine. Okay, let's get our number eight loaded up. This is level all the way across. And I'll lighten it a little bit with the paper towel. And now I will get some titanium and work inside of this thing, of this mixture we have. And lightly figure out where some mountains are going to be up in here. And now I'm going to knock that out 
And I need to maybe eliminate some of those swirls I have up on top. So I'm going to get a little bit of Gamsol, my paper towel, and see what I can do about that. Softening that a little bit. And now we'll go to a cerulean viridian mixture for the sky. So let's get some titanium and some, oh, some viridian and some cobalt. And let's just figure out where that's going to be. Just going to smear some up there and see what I can do with it. So let's go back to make some viridian, some cobalt, titanium white, titanium white, and spread that around a little bit. Brush off. So I'm going to get the old inch and a half room, try to make sure I can get that green gray stuff out of here. So I'm going to really squeeze it out here. And I dipped it in my Gamsol and I'm just going to spread those big hunks of color I have up in here. And then I'll thin it out with the paper towels. Kind of looks like watercolor at this point. I started as a watercolor paint artist and it just drove me nuts. I wasn't enjoying it. And when I switch to oils, I go, oh man, I have so much more control. So I'm trying to spreading it out evenly, even though in my paintings I make this lighter and this darker. We're not at that stage yet. So here's my paper towel. And I'm just thinning it out. And the canvas has enough tooth to hold a basic thin color. And that's all I want for now. All right, time to do some drawing on the, this building. So I'm going to switch over to a drawing color, which will be, I think, some transparent oxide red or some gray. All right, we'll do that in a second. Let me control my palette. I need mixing room, clean mixing room. So with a combination of palette knife, scraper, I can clean my palette quickly because I'm working on glass here in the studio. So whatever I'm drawing with, I want to have something with a sharp edge. And this uh, number two rosemary, number two, 279, has a nice sharp edge to it and has some length to it. I kind of really like it. I'm going to add some gray to this. And I think I'm just going to go with transparent oxide red because that gray is kind of hard to erase. So I'm just going to go transparent oxide red and start with that. So I noticed that we want to know where the buildings are going to start. Excuse me, I hope I'm not too much in your way. And where they're going to end. We're going to have bushes up in here. And then we're going to have the bottom of the buildings. And these will be level. They won't be angled like this. They're going to kind of go with this nice flat area here. So we're going to put them on a somewhat plane right in here 
over here. And the very top is going to be up in here somewhere. So it's all going to be in these various places in that area. So I kind of made parameters of where the buildings are going to be, start and end. Well, the reference gives me a few ideas of where things are. Up in here there's a, I think a building that's pretty, it's pretty tall, maybe even taller than what I have here. And then it has an angle to it, a roof, and another angle coming out. And now I'm going to have to guess that it's going to also restart in here. And we'll make a little thing like that, it's starting to look like a building. And then under that, from about off this peak, is another one that comes out. And it's kind of back here. And then there's others that are scattered out in this area. So I know there's a dark under here. I'm assuming there's going to be darks under here. And then over here we have more buildings that start in this area. Maybe right off this peak right here. And more shallow roofs. Hey, whoo! Did a sore arm holding it up like that. Now I don't want to make this thing completely about building, so I'm gonna skinny them down just a little bit. But under here I need my darks. I think we are not too far off. Whew. So you get an idea of what I'm going to be doing here, is drawing these things out. And then uh, what I'd like you to do is then figure out where your trees, these pine trees and bushes are going to be, to the side or in the front. I'm going to have some in front of the buildings and some off to the side so I can show more buildings, but uh, not hide it as much as this reference does. So, I think with that, that's a good start. So we're blocking in, we're figuring out where these big shapes are. We're putting in these very thin value colors. And spend some time on that drawing. I'm going to be doing that. And uh, then figuring out where these bushes and, uh, are going to be um, on front or beside uh, uh, of these um, buildings. And looking at this, this guy may be a little too big. I may have to take him this way a little bit. And um, because I don't want it too much about the buildings. I want it a good balance between buildings and surroundings. All right, with that, I'm going to be bring part one Diamond Ranch to an end. And um, I'll see you in part two. All right, thanks for coming by.